Island fever. A lot of us here in Taiwan have it because we can't travel abroad. But that means we get to go island hopping and enjoy all that Taiwan has to offer. And we'll be telling you all about that in today's Taiwan Insider. I'm Natalie So. And I'm Andrew Ryan. Let's check out the stories on our radar. President Tsai Ing-wen has praised two army helicopter pilots who were killed in a crash last Thursday, calling them heroes. The two were returning to base after taking part in the annual Hanguang military exercise when the crash occurred. The military says they were above a residential area when they realized their helicopter was in trouble and chose to veer away and sacrifice themselves rather than risk the lives of those below. After an acrimonious confirmation process, the legislature has approved Chen Ju as the next head of the Control Yuan. The agency is charged with monitoring and investigating the other four branches of the government. Chen's nomination led to scuffles between lawmakers. Backers say she's right for the job, but opponents doubt her political impartiality. They say that's because the same Control Yuan once impeached members of Chen's staff back when she served as mayor of Kaohsiung. Taiwan's demographic woes have hit a tipping point. The Interior Ministry says the country has started seeing more deaths than births for the first time in history. Researchers say the slide into negative population growth will continue over the next three years. People are putting off getting married due to COVID-19, and the upcoming Year of the Tiger is traditionally seen as a bad time to have kids. And under the radar this week, it's a rescue center for wildlife. Taiwan already has seven of these centers, but this will be the first along the remote east coast, which is teeming with wildlife. Pangolins, Formosan black bears, and all the other cute critters of eastern Taiwan will no longer have to be sent far away to get veterinary care. And now for our words of the week. Andrew, ready to guess? Yes, I am. Applesauce. <laughs> Hungry Ar again? <laughs> Aren't you happy to see me? Uh, around the world. Arch architecture? Archipelago. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Oof. So Taiwan is an archipelago, 166 islands. So that's a lot of sightseeing to do. And we'll be telling you more about some of those islands in today's show. Excellent. Are you ready for my word? Yep. All righty. Staycation? Aha. Uh -huh. that's, hey, that's right. That makes sense. Yep. So I, I kind of feel bad because I know a lot of people are staying at home because they have no choice. But if maybe we can flip it on its head and think about it with a different perspective, maybe every day is a vacation. Or maybe just staying in Taiwan is a vacation. That's true. We can venture near home and we still call it a staycation. Right. Why not? Enjoy what's around us, right? That's right. Let's put these on the shelf. Both Andrew and I were supposed to travel abroad this summer, but we had to cancel our plans due to COVID-19. In a way, you can say we're stuck in Taiwan. That's right. But what does stuck in Taiwan look like? Well, here are a couple things. Beaches, hot air balloons, even cruises. Well, you know, a couple years from now, we may look back at the year 2020 as the year that Taiwan rediscovered itself. With the COVID-19 outbreak contained in Taiwan, people can now explore and enjoy all that Taiwan has to offer. And they're doing it with a vengeance. It's called revenge tourism, taking revenge on the virus and its impact. Last weekend, people flocked to the Summer Travel Expo, the perfect place to use the nation's new economic stimulus coupons. Every citizen can buy $3,000 NT dollars worth of coupons for just $1,000. Not too bad, especially if you couple it with the government's other travel incentives like hotel subsidies. And people in Taiwan are lucky they don't have to go far to enjoy stunning natural scenery, delicious food, and a variety of museums and festivals. On the pristine east coast, Taidong just began its International Hot Air Balloon Festival, which runs until the end of August. After that, it will hold its international surfing and Ironman competitions. Then there are outlying islands like Mazu. It takes a boat ride or a trip by plane to get there, so travelers can even feel like they are going overseas. Once there, visitors can see a giant statue of the goddess of the sea and the exotic blue tears phenomenon that lights up the sea at night. Taiwan has even brought in an international cruise ship to take people on trips to the outlying islands. Places like Green Island, Xiaoliuqiu, and Kunding also offer great snorkeling and scuba diving experiences. 
For those who want to catch an aerial view of Taipei, Taipei 101 is also offering a special discount for visitors to its observatory. Go now and you can get in for just one-fourth the usual price, only $150 dollars until the end of September. So how do you get a tourist spot to go viral? That's the million-dollar question from even before COVID-19. Well, today I'm going to tell you about how a photograph changed the fate of a Taiwanese island. Sometimes a viral image is all you need to create a new hotspot, but we had more than that, right? That's right. One very important thing is, is you need an influencer. So I want to start by introducing you to my friend Ken. Now, he's from Japan originally. Uh, he lives here in Taiwan. He's best known by his Chinese name, Xiaolin Xianwu. Now, Ken's a photographer, a writer, and he's got a huge following on Facebook and Instagram. Great pictures, nice guy, and he's a good-looking dude to boot. So he goes for a hike, uh, and he sees this beautiful mountain, which is called Wu Feng Qi Shan, and he takes a picture, and then he posts this picture on Instagram with the caption, Taiwan's matcha ice cream mountain. It does look like matcha, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Would you take a bite out of it? Uh, maybe. In my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As you can guess, uh, this photo goes viral. You know, sometimes all it takes is somebody with a unique perspective, a catchy name, and then all of a sudden you have this mountain that all sorts of people from Taiwan, even tourists from Japan, want to go and visit. So the photo went viral. What about Ken, the photographer? Well, he actually got his own TV show. Because of this photo? Uh, he, well, that's one Part of the of things the that started. Wow. Yeah. He's also released his own book. And recently, the Tourism Bureau uh, asked him to star in a short film uh, to promote one of Taiwan's most famous mountains. So Land of Legends is a short film that promotes Ali Shan, uh, which is home to the Zhou people here in Taiwan. Let's have a look. ここに2つの太陽があり祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の祖先の
洪水がどのように去ったかに関してはまた一つ神話が教えてくれるのである。神話、冒険との会話が始まる。Those images of、uh, Ali-san are just beautiful. I went there. It's an unforgettable place. You were just there with him, right? That's right. I was actually on Ali-san. I was there for the film release, and I actually got the chance to talk with Ken. There were a lot of people there. The transportation minister and county officials were all there, and they also had some people from the Zo tribe performing traditional songs. And while I was there, I also got the chance to talk with Ken on stage. Ah, 大家好，我是小林。呃，我是从日本来的摄影摄影作家。对我来说，阿里山是一个特别的山，因为。那个阿里山里面有很多从日本时代留下来的东西，然后那些东西让我想起了日本的生活或者是画面，比如说樱花，还有火茶，然后有一些会说日语的。阿里山是真的对我来说一个很很特别的山，我去很多阿里山的风景，然后所有的阿里山的族子朋友们一直跟我。那个打招呼，然后有一些朋友说用日语，他们很会，然后他们很标准，所以我觉得日本的直线跟那个现在的走组的朋友们的有一些结合，这个画面我觉得最棒。So if you're interested in connecting with Ken on Instagram and Facebook and watching this promotional video again, we'll have all the links for you in the show notes below. Okay, today in three picks, we're going to look at a beautiful little island called Xiao Liu Chou. It's also called Little Lambai and also Little Rukyo and Little Liu Chou. Has a whole bunch of names. Have you、wow. guys been there? I have. I have. have? Yes. Okay, great. So you guys can answer the first question pretty easily then. Okay. This is not about a picture though.、Mm -hmm. um, where is it in direction-wise in relation to Taiwan? Southwest. Very good. Let's take a look at the map. <laughs> see, see that, in that little island over there. Leslie has fat hands. He got <laughs> yeah, the buzzer the first. The <laughs> Southwest of Taiwan.、Mm. It's only about thirty-minute ferry ride from Donggang and Kaohsiung, and it's only seven square kilometers. A little island, but it's a lot of fun. Little tiny island with、Super、a lot、fun. of fun. A、yes. lot of fun. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at another picture from that <laughs> island. Let's take a look at the picture first. So these are from Xiao Liu Chou. What are they? <laughs> hey, is your hand over there? No. <laughs> okay. You can、right, have、Andrew. it. Those look like paperweights to me. Okay, but they're not. <laughs> oh. They are tokens you get for picking tr picking up trash. That's on the right. They call it beach、beaches. currency. <laughs> and what it is actually going on this week, and it started last week, last Tuesday. There's five big cleanup campaigns. For the sea turtles,、oh. because sea turtles can't tell the difference between food and plastic,、mm. so people are cleaning them up. If you help clean up, you can get one of these、uh, beach tokens, a currency, and you can use it can as use a paperweight. <laughs> <laughs> you can use it for discounts at the stores over there. Oh, excellent! Isn't that pretty cool. That's a great idea. Okay, let's take a look at the next picture.、Oh. That's a beautiful sea turtle that I went to swim with. Okay, so that's so. that's your picture. Yeah,、oh, wow. and、um, so a lot of people go to Shalucha for the sea turtles because they like to swim with them and to see them, right? So I want to ask you in this question, the answer has a range. Look at here; he's about to go up to get a breath of air, right?、Uh -huh. You know how sea turtles have lungs and they need air,、mm -hmm. yes, for oxygen. So,、um, how long do they usually stay underwater between breaths? Oh man, oh, that's tough. Range? Yeah, we range. have to be in between the range. Okay, you have to be in the range then. I'm gonna say three minutes. Three minutes. Okay, you're out of the range. How about、uh, you? Out of the range? <laughs> Wait, three minutes? They're amphibians, so it's not like you or I. 
Why don't you take a guess, Leslie? An hour and a half? You're out of the range too! <laughs> How long? Well, oh no, actually, it's like this. Five to 40 minutes. Five to if 40 minutes. If they're awake. I was closer. Oh, right? Wow. I was closer. I said three sleeping, minutes. That's two minutes off. <laughs> they're sleeping is four to seven hours. Okay. Wow. So they can sleep underwater four to seven hours without going up for air. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? Super amazing. I want so, to be a green, little green turtle, little sea turtle. They're, they're beautiful and they're just so fun to watch when you go swimming with them. Did you guys go snorkeling too? I did. It was so amazing. I almost, I was swimming and one like cut me off. It was so close. But you oh have gosh. to be really careful because you're not supposed to touch yeah. them. Yeah. You're not supposed to touch them. And I was you're like not trying to, to back pedal. Wear a sunscreen, do anything that might harm them. So, um, mm. but they're really, really cute. Mm, super cute. Okay. Now let's take a look at another photo. You guys probably recognize this. It's the most famous attraction there. People love to go there, and it has great snorkeling right in the area. What is the name of that rock? I think it's the Queen's Head. No. no. Oh, that, that's Queen. in Yelio. Oh, in no, it's in Yutao. Wrong direction, wrong direction. There's one, that, there's one in... Another Queen's yes. Head? Okay. What does it look like? I have absolutely no Can idea. Can we see the picture again? Let's see the picture again. What does it look like? Uh... Doesn't wow, it, look it looks like I'm gonna say duck. something. I'm gonna say something <laughs> like totally off. I'm not gonna say it. I'm done. I abstain. Yeah, oh, come on, just make a guess. It looks like a bird's head. Nope. Not a bird's head. Oh, okay, it's called vase rock. Vase. Or flower vase rock. Hua ping. Oh. Oh, because so you got the thing on the sticking out. I was just looking at the big right. rock formation. It's so the vase rock is one of the best places to go snorkeling in Shaolin. I just went there. We had a great time. And uh, I hope you get to check out our wonderful destination there, Xiaoliu Chou. This week on Hashtag Taiwan, I want to talk to you about looking fresh. Now, let me give you the abridged version about how we stumbled upon this week's story. I said, hey, Andrew, I got a really great online story for Hashtag. And Andrew said, you're right. I totally love it. I'm going to post this on Twitter. At the time of writing, Andrew's tweet has 3,600 likes and 1,100 retweets. I said, that's legit viral, to which he responded, well, it's more like kind of viral. But in today's hashtag, I want to talk to you about this elderly couple. They're skyrocketing in fame, and you can kind of tell why. Grandpa and Grandma are certified superfly. You might think that they're fashion models for the likes of GQ or Vogue, but they're actually dry cleaners. This elderly couple has owned a dry cleaners called Wan Xiu Xi Yi Dian for over 60 years now. 60, as in 6 zero. Over the years, they've accumulated a lot of clothes that customers have dropped off and forgotten or refused to pick up. Some of the clothes are 20 years old, so when I say that they might be wearing your grandparents' clothes, I mean they literally might be wearing your grandpa and grandma's clothes. Instead of getting rid of the unclaimed garments, the couple's grandson actually wanted to give the clothes a new purpose. While at the same time giving grandpa and grandma something to do. He dressed them up in the clothes and the rest is history. Excuse me when I say this, but dang can they pull off that retro look. The elderly couple has been blowing up on Instagram. With only 18 posts, they've attracted over 70,000 followers. Every picture they put out is magazine worthy, and I love the progression from the early pictures where they are more candid to the later ones where grandma and grandpa are straight owning the camera. Store policy dictates that they will only hold on to leftover clothes for a month. After that, they are allowed to do with it what they will, and oh, will they will. Grandpa has said that if someone wants to buy the clothes shown on Instagram, he'd be more than happy to ship it. Not only is this Instagram account amazing for recycling and reusing old clothes, but the concept itself is so overwhelmingly charming. And I'll be the first to admit that I have never, ever looked that fresh in my life. Welcome once again to the Taiwan News Quiz, where I don't like the uncertainty of answering questions, so I'm coming back to ask them. <laughs> now, Natalie and Andrew, have you guys been keeping up this week? I don't know. Uh, we'll have to find out, right? Ish. <laughs> it's okay, Andrew. Last week, you dished me some humble pie, so I eased up on the questions oh, a little okay. bit. 60 seconds on the clock. Are you guys ready? Yep. Yes. Here we go. Taiwan's newest envoy to the U.S., Xiaobi Kim, likened herself to what, saying she will use that mentality to combat Chinese aggression? Cat. Yes. <laughs> Taipei Zoo recently named its baby panda cub what? Roro. Roro. Ro -ro. <laughs> US, Congress, US Congressman Ted Yoho from Florida introduced a bill authorizing the US to do what in the event of a Chinese invasion of Taiwan? 
protect, protect Taiwan. Taiwan. Correct. Last week, a Taiwanese student was honored as the youngest recipient of the Presidential Education Award. How old was she? Nine. Uh, nine. Nine yeah. years old. Correct. The legislative yuan passed a resolution to highlight what on the Taiwanese passport? Taiwan. 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 Very good. Taiwan's Thai X stock market hit a new high earlier this week. This is the highest it's been since how long? Thirty years. Thirty years. Oh. Correct. Taiwan said it will start certifying what food product to combat fake merchandise. Uh, uh, food product. Food product. Uh, some kind of meat. It will start certifying honey. Ah, honey. Yes. Oh, and last wow. question: A private Taiwanese clinic says what food allergen is the most common among Taiwanese people? Mang pine. Mango. Egg whites, and the reason why I ask you that Whoa. is because I actually got a health checkup at that clinic last month, and I also did an allergy test, and I also <laughs> tested positive for allergic reactions to egg whites. But are oh, you? No. So I am one of the statistics. Really? Mm -hmm. You're a statistic. Yeah. I never thought we'd see this day last. It's week. all right. I still eat <laughs> eggs. Like it does. So, so, so you so, can have eggs in like baked goods. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be fine. But you eat <laughs> eggs anyways. Yeah, it's a mild food allergy, but it's still. Ticks. I'm does still it, in that report. Do you, what does do it you do feel to you? weird when you I have no so? idea. You, like, you're a little bit Can crazy? you try some <laughs> I, I, I just ate eggs before we started recording. Nothing's happened so far. You look totally normal. Yeah, so if anything's going on, <laughs> He's gonna it's going to break out in just five more minutes. <laughs> so, you know, watch out for me, you guys, when I'm eating egg whites. All right. But other than that, that was Ta this week's Taiwan News Quiz. All right, we have one final question today. What is the antidote to island fever, Leslie? I don't know, man. Island aspirin? <laughs> <laughs> Natalie? Well, I think there's still a lot more to explore, you know? Mm -hmm. And even if you're just stuck in your hometown or your home, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. just enjoy every corner of it. <laughs> I think so, and too. Yeah, for me, there's so much to explore in Taiwan still. I'm going to give you a specific one. Go find a waterfall and sit in it. Aha, uh -huh, sounds good. All right, well, that's Taiwan Insider for this week. Be sure to connect with us on social media. Yes, leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. For Taiwan Insider, I'm Natalie So. I'm Leslie Liao. And I'm Andrew Ryan. See you next week.